Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Bumper here, okay, back with a new video today. Uh, I've done a lot of um, content recently. I've had some issues with my setup and sort of where I like to record you know, with some of my movies in the background. Unfortunately, this room is also a bedroom now. So where I used to do my videos in the night when everyone was in bed, there's actually a bed in this room now and there's always someone sleeping in there at the night. So I haven't been able to do a lot of recording. And then my other shelves with all my boutique stuff on, in the living room it's hard to get a chair in there and set up a good filming angle so um yeah i've been a little bit restricted but don't worry i'll find a way around it soon but just to keep my channel ticking over i thought i'd do a video today when i got a chance while my kids are out so i didn't have a lot of ideas to be honest because it's a bit spare at the moment so i thought i'm going to run through my sabrin collection all right so sabrin an american label owned by david gregory okay who is actually british but a lot of the movies they release, like the video nasties, are not available in the UK or not available fully uncut. So this is why, um, you know, this um, boutique label is American because they're a bit more looser about what they can release. And it's no problem these days because we can just import it all anyway. So and they do do the odd UK release as well, mine, but um, it's majority uh, American releases. All right. So we'll start off then. I'll go through the ones without slip covers first. All right. They got a Wicked label called Sabrin Kids. Um, I got a couple of titles. One of the ones I got is Journey to the Centre of the Earth. Okay, so this is like a Ray Harryhausen type uh, stop motion extravaganza. I thought it was really good. I only watched it once a while ago. We could do with another viewing. Ideal Sunday afternoon viewing, actually. So just to give you the skinny then, it's multi-region. So you can watch it on any um, player. There's the back there if you want to see it. Not very expensive, this one. Only about 15, 16 pound, I think I paid for it. So kind of folded. It doesn't. It does have a reversible art as well. So there's that. Nice picture disc. So yeah, like I said, this is on the Seven Kids label. So it won't be. It's not. They're not really movies for kids, but they're just a bit more family friendly than the other stuff they've released. I suppose they're good gateway movies if you're trying to get your kid into things like that. But it's not always easy because all they're interested in these days is watching YouTube. All right, then. So another. Um, one without a slipcover. This is Extraterrestrial vis Extraterrestrial Visitors, the second coming, built as ET2 <laughs> by Sabrin. They got this knack, Sabrin, of releasing films and then doing like limited edition slipcovers with like big films on and doing them as sequels. I think they've done like a Terminator sequel, and, but they obviously bought the Terminator and they've done Maniac 2, which is really the last horror film. And um, they've done this one where they call it ET2. Uh, I can't think of the other ones, but I mean, they must be fine to do it with rights and everything. There must have been a time when these movies were called that because otherwise, I suppose they couldn't just make it up. But this is multi region again, so you can watch this anywhere. They put the, spa the special features up by here on all seven releases so you can see them. So, yeah, this movie was pretty good. The alien in it is hilarious. If you think the alien in Mac and Me is funny, wait till you see the guy in this. I can't think what his name is now. I want to shoot in there. Let's see if this says on here. Um, oh, I can't see the I can't see the the name of it on here, but anyway, let's see if we can get like a close picture. There he is. There he's got like a snorkel nose. I don't know if you can see that, but film was all right. He hasn't got a great lot of rewatchability, but you know, as far as things like Mac and Me and ET and all go, it's I've seen worse, I guess. All right, so this next one's a wicked one. This is the Uncanny. So this is a horror anthology a bit like um the amicus movies this one isn't by amicus the uncanny i don't think you know it's got peter cushion in and donald pleasance um it's sort of tied together by a cat the different stories like a cat goes round, a bit like the littlest hobo and you just sort of um following round in the different stories a bit like um cat size i suppose by stephen king but i think that was made later so oh, that was a bit of a rip off oh well this one is um multi-region again so you can watch it there's not a lot of features on there but you know, as far as the film goes, pretty good. There's the picture disc. And then um, there's no reversible art on this one, so. Sorry about that, just had a disruption in the fall. So yeah, saying about the uncanny then. Um, it is produced by Milton Sabosky, who's the main man on Amicus. So it's definitely got an Amicus feel. Again, a wicked Sunday movie, a Sunday movie watch or Sunday evening movie watch. The uncanny, great film. All right, then the next one is aliens from the abyss again similar to uh the et one didn't cost a lot of money by 16.99 i think on ebay so i don't mind paying that doesn't have a slip cover but whatever there's all your um special features there so plenty of those it's region a so you'd have to be careful if you bought this one if you fancy this one in the uk you will need a multi-region player all right it's got a nice picture disc as always 
and then there's no reversible art on this one so you're stuck with that one the movie was okay another alien ripoff i've seen worse um not a lot not a lot going on really the special effects are quite limited and whatever to only seeing this arm but um yeah it's still pretty good all right then this is a weird one again no slip cover um it says at the bottom absolutely the most incredible ending of any motion picture ever so this has got the man shatner in william shatner it's called the devil's reign long time since i've seen this one now i I did a couple of years. I watched it when I first had it, but never went back to it since. Got John Travolta in it as well. Blink on your missing mind. Um, multi region, so you're all good. Plenty of special features on this bad boy. And yeah, this is just a satanic panic um, horror film. Like I said, William Shatner's uh, in it. He's as crazy as ever. But yeah, I enjoyed this one from what I can remember of it. I do need to really watch it again. It says on the back, one of the most notorious driving shockers of the 70s. So, um, yeah, I'll check this out again soon. But I remember it being really good. I think I'll give it. Three eight to five on that the box, so it's not bad. All right, so here's another one on the Severin Kids label now. I think this is the first Severin Kids one I ever bought. Uh, this is the best one. This is called the Peanut Butter Solution. Okay, so this is a um, a kids movie from back in the day in the nineties, I think. Let's have a look. On oh, nineteen eighty five, actually, a bit like a a movie you would get on Nickelodeon or something. You know, it's about this kid. And he loses all his hair in an accident and then all the kids are bullying him in school and there's this old couple who he helped at the start of the film so in return they give him this thing called the peanut butter solution he put it on his head to make his hair grow back because like they're like a, uh, into like witchcraft and black magic and it works but it doesn't stop growing and then he gets the attentions of an evil toy maker then who can think of millions of things to do with his hair like making hair, uh, paint brushes and dolls hair and things like that so yeah it's really good um, I try to get my kids to watch it and again they're just not into anything really unless it's on YouTube um, so probably one just for the adults really but yeah all loads of features on it and whatever so yeah like I said I can't recommend this one enough no matter what age you are it's absolutely wicked I don't know if it's Canadian or um, Australian Nickelodeon by the way of David Lynch um, I don't know how people... yeah it's Canadian sorry I used to think it was Australian but no it's Canadian so yeah, so that's wicked. It gives you the peanut butter solution inside as well. If you're going bald and you want to give it a bash. And then we got like an advert there for the Severin kids. Uh, when the wind blows. Messed up cartoon that is. Uh, cracking picture disc as always. Then there is reversible art on this one. So modern art is really nice. The new commissioned. And then this is the old one. Then. Not quite as uh, good in my opinion. But still. All right then, so that's the peanut butter solution. That one comes highly recommended by Bumpo. I gotta be fair, so if you haven't already seen it, then check it out. Okay, then one more without the slip cover. This is from the side label in division. All right, so this is called the halfway house. Okay, so I didn't know anything about this when I bought it in the sale, but Master Chaos said it was good, full of boobs and <laughs> shitty special effects when I'm all over it. Uh, this is multi region. I didn't check peanut butter. Expand multi region, so you're okay with peanut butter solution. This is multi region, so you're all right. There's just features down the side there. Nice picture disc, uh, no reversible art. I can't remember a lot about this one. I did watch it about this like alien thing that comes, oh, I don't know, like it's like on a, through a board game or something, or through like this talisman. I, I can't remember much about it, but um, it was all right from what I remember. Like, like I said, full of boobs and shit special effects. So if that's your thing, check it out. Let me move on to some with slips then. So this first one, then absolutely amazing film, Burial Ground. Okay, so this is at a 4K release now from both Severin and in the UK from 88. But I'm happy with this one. These are not cheap when you first buy them. And so the double dip, really, you know, I don't know. Like if 4K didn't exist or this film wasn't on 4K, everyone would say, oh, this is amazing. This is the release you need. Picture quality on this is superb. So, you know, that doesn't all just get thrown out the window when a 4K comes out. So, you know, I'm not falling for it. I'm going to keep this one. We'll get slip cover on it. And I'm happy with it. Picture quality is amazing. And then you've got your stuff on the back there then. Sorry, I can't remember to look at the camera all the time. Stuff on the back there then. Um, Multi-region, so you're okay if you did want to get this one, although it'd probably be cheaper for the 88 films 4K in this country than they would to get this one in from Severin. So there's the inside, wicked. There's your, all your special features, plenty of those on there. Wicked picture disc, as always. And then it's got reversible art, which is basically the same as the slip cover. Oh no, it's not one. I'm the same as the slip cover. That's the original artwork, I think. Video nasty artwork, although I could be wrong. I'm not great with all the artworks. You need Nigel Rock God 2004 for the skinny on that, because he knows his stuff. But anyway, like I said, great film. 
from the 70s, late 70s, Italian um, splatter <laughs> with some weird, weird erotic scenes going on. You've got the guy here who's supposed to be playing like a bloody seven year old, but he's about bloody 25, was his name? I can't bloody remember now. Uh, Peter something in there. Oh, where's he too on you? Ah, oh, Peter, Peter, Peter Park. That's it. So yeah, you need to see this film, even if you don't really enjoy it or it's not your scene, just to see the ending. Like, I just won't spoil it for you, but it's just hilarious, man. So bear your grain, wicked. All right, this one's still in the cellophane, but I have seen the film before. I'll get into watching it one day. Again, it's got a 4K now from Second Sight and from Severin, but I don't really feel the need to double dip, because I don't remember thinking this movie was all that, really. The Changeling with George C. Scott, okay? So old school, haunted house movie. Um... It's got a similar back to the other one. I've never opened this, so I don't know what it looks like on the inside. So it's multi-region. I'll tell you what, we're opening it now. Because I've got no intentions of ever selling it or anything. It's just sometimes, you know, I don't open them until I watch them. All right, so there we are then. So inside then, we've got the old school artwork. So it's similar to the front, but the front's got like a blue tint and this has got like the orangey tint loads of special features and we'll open them up it's a two disc set absolutely awesome and then there's no reversible art so like i said it's a haunted house movie with george she's got it's pretty well known it's pretty famous it's from 1980 say i didn't think it was all that really i thought it was a bit boring but then we are spoiled these days with good haunted house movies like um the conjuring and stuff so you know it has got a it has got a high bar to live up against um, but of course, being the original, you know, at the time it didn't have the high bar, but now it does. Um, so anyway, yeah, the change didn't look good. And then here's a video nasty here. Absolutely awesome slipcover. Cannibal Man. It's all embossed as well. When I say all embossed, some of it's embossed. Um, there's the back there. So this is a video nasty. It's not super nasty, I've got to be honest. I wouldn't be put off watching it. Uh, there's the old video nasty artwork there. It's a bit more, a bit more erotic than... Um, Super violent, to be honest, but it's a good film. Slow burner. It's got heavy homosexual overtones. I gotta be fair, but still, whatever. Um, so it's about this man, anyway, and um, the the has got reverse one up, but it's the same as the slip, so I just no need to turn it around. It's just about a guy, really, like, and he works in like a food food process, processing plant, and um, he kills people. He doesn't want to kill them. Like it's one of those sort of he kills someone by accident, and then the other killings are sort of like done to protect himself so he don't get caught and um yeah he just gets deeper and deeper into this spiral and he goes out of control but he's getting rid of the dead bodies at this meat processing plant like by putting them through the um mincer <laughs> so uh yeah it's pretty cool what's the regions so it's multi-region again so you could uh watch it anyway this has got a 4k but it's a german release and there are some good companies in germany like Koch and turbine but there's also some dodgy ones as well and i've had 4ks on there in the past and they look awful so i would get the seven one if i was to get any one i gotta be fair all right then this is a wicked one this is called day of the animals so if you ever wanted to see leslie nielsen with his top off in the rain fighting a bear then this is the film for you uh, it's not quite as exciting as it says but it's still good um there's the back there and you know, I don't know if anyone else is in there famous apart from Leslie Nielsen. I've only seen this one. There was on oh, Linda Day George. You bastards! <laughs> Love Linda Day George. Um, yeah, so that's cool. And then um, it's got the multi region, so you're all good. Disc is wicked. It's got two artworks inside as well. So you've got the slip cover artwork, then you've got this artwork, loads of features. And then that's the other artwork then. Pretty similar, really, but, um, you know, still nice to have a choice. So, yeah, it's just animals gone wild. You know, animals run, run amok, one of those sort of films. And like I said, the main selling point, really, is Leslie Nielsen being in it, you know, running around with his top off the old film, playing the ad man. So, yeah, that's cool. All right, so the next one up then is... All right, so the next one up there, I think this is a video nasty. I'm not sure what category it is. Not the first category, maybe two or three. I blind bought this one, um, but it had a limited edition slip cover. Like they repressed a new slip cover, so that's why I grabbed it. So that's on the back there. <laughs> it is the, the perfect shout there. Yeah, I mean, he comes good at the end, but <laughs> at the start, like when he's trying to bloody. Well, I don't really like saying these words, but trying to bloody abuse his daughter like, is a bit much, but. Um, it's just, it's, I don't know, it was just done in a funny way in the 70s, wasn't it? Like, no one took offence, wicked inside cover. So it's like a, um, this is like a, what they call a backward redneck slasher. Um, 
And yeah, it's pretty damn good, I've got to be honest. I've seen this maybe two or three times since owning it. It's multi-region, so you can grab it. There's all your special features. Wicked picture disc. It doesn't have a reversible art. But um, yeah, this is quite a rare film. This is one I think many people have seen. But I definitely, along with the peanut butter solution, I definitely highly recommend this one, Midnight. Sorry about that, just pulling the door shut because my kids were born in the barn. All right, another video nasty then. Uh, this one is House on the Edge of the Park. So this is directed by um, Roguero Diodato, who did Cut and Run and the infamous Cannibal Holocaust. All right, so here's your back there. You've got David Hess with the switchblade. Then the front's got the switchblade and the blood, which is all embossed. So that's wicked. Uh, one of the best slips this is, fair dues. Again, you can get a 4K in Britain and a 4K, I think, from Severin now. I don't know if Severin have done the 4K actually, I could be wrong. But um, again, I'm happy with this picture quality on this, is wicked. So here's the artwork inside. You've got this wicked Severin label across here. So this is region locked. So if you haven't got multi-region, then you are just going to have to get the 4K from 88. Loads of special features. Also includes the soundtrack on this one. And a documentary about Diodato Vergaro. Don't know if I'm butchering his name or what. Um, or Vigero Diodato, I sent it off my way, did I? But, you know, documentaries are worth 20 quid on their own. Same tracks are worth a tenner. So, you know, this is a really good three-disc set. Wicked disc for disc art for that as well. The main one, it gives you a track listing right here for the songs on the CD. It does have a reversible art, so you've got everything with this one, basically. Oops, sorry. My only gripe is that Sabrin, along with Vinegar Syndrome and other American boutique labels, is they cram three discs into a 10 millimeter ram array. So not really keen on that. They should give us a old school British 14 millimeter really. But um, you know, what can you do? So yeah, I watched this one recently. I won't give you my thoughts on it because it's going to be coming up on uh, Double Bill Movies. My man Trev is the next one we're doing for the video nasties. I watched it. I just got to send my notes over to Trev and he'll be doing the video on it. But anyway, you know, you're probably already aware of this film anyway. So yeah, awesome. Okay, now next up, this one comes highly recommended. This is probably my favourite film on Sabrin, outside of the big hitters. Okay, so this is called Siege. Okay, this is a wicked slip cover on it as well. Proper like old school 80s action vibe going on. Here's the back there. All I would say is it's got very strong homophobic language at the start. So if you are offended by things like that, then best not to watch. But, you know, you could never make this movie now. But aside from that, it's wicked. Like it's about this guy who, it's about this guy who escapes a... Um, a nightclub, a gay nightclub after everyone in this game butchered by these gangsters and then obviously they go after him and he holds up in this apartment block and the people in the apartment are trying to help him against the bad guys like and it's really good. It's multi-region so you can check it out. Um, there's not a lot of features on this one, there's only a couple in the top corner but that's made up by the fact that it's just a unique great movie that you probably haven't seen. It's got the immortal line in it as well, don't call me turkey asshole, <laughs> which I just love. It's got reversible art as well, so there we go, wicked reversible art on that one. It's a bit, bit tough, you know, a bit hard to choose which one to use on that, but like I said, you probably never heard of this movie, but trust Bumper when he says you need to see it. I would never have known about it if I didn't just blind buy it off Severin, so sometimes blind buying is fine if it's in the sale especially. So um, yeah, really good movie. If you can get your hands on this, Siege, then get it. Absolutely awesome. So this movie now is um, Amicus, but it's not Anthology, which is unbelievable, really. Amicus not doing an Anthology. It's The Beast Must Die, so it's a bit of a whodunit. Again, another good uh, Sunday evening viewing. That sort of um, mellow, dramatic kind of... Um, mellow dramatic, but like a little bit exciting whodunit kind of thing. Perfect for like Sundays and bank holidays. So you've got this and the beast must die on the back. The slipcover's good, it's plain. Uh, so it is embossed in the places you expect it to be though. And then you've got the old school cover then there. Uh, multi-region, again, big up seven. My Most of this stuff is multi-region. There's not much that's not. Loads of features, absolutely awesome. Just the one disker. And it doesn't have reversible art. But like I said, it's by Amicus, but it's not an anthology movie. It's like a murder who done it. Uh, all these guests are in like a big house, whatever you want to call it, a stately manor, and um, someone dies, and then it's just basically finding out who did it. It's basically a, um, a, a pro, I can't even say, Pravo, fucking hell, a Pravo type movie. I still didn't even say it right, but whatever. You know, that French detective. Right, all right, the next one up then is a bit similar to Day of the Animals. It's Grizzly. 
Okay, this was still in the cellar things. I have seen it a few times back in the day. This was like the first Jaws ripoff, or like maybe like the biggest Jaws ripoff, the one that done the best. Although it's a better beer, so really it's not it's not wholly a Jaws ripoff, is it? It's just another animals run wild type movie. But with the success of Cocaine Bear, um, you know, this might appeal to more people. They're better than Cocaine Bear, this is. I don't give a shit what anyone says. Cocaine Bear was terrible. But um, I haven't opened this one, like I said, because I've already seen it before, but I'm never going to sell it or anything, so I'm happy to open it. And there's your old school art inside there. This is one thing I don't like about Severin, as well as the small cases, they put these stickers on the top. It stops you from opening the case unless you take it off. And if you don't notice it, you could be a bit rough and sort of like damage the case, but they don't come off that great either, look. So uh, it's just a bit shitty. I don't know what the idea is behind this. Well, I do know what the idea is behind this. Where they got the film stock like that, they can see what the title is, I suppose. I just find a different way, in it? Like... Here we are, finally got it. And then there's the disc there. There is a reversible art, not much different to the other one, really. It's still got like the white and the red. Okay, I don't know if I already said, but it is multi region. So if you wanted to go the Seb route instead of, I think it's on 88 films, this movie. I could be wrong. It could be 101 or something, but um, no, I'm sure it's 88 that released it. I always have a nightmare getting these covers back on. Grizzly, good film, man. All right, then another uh, killer animal movie, Animals Run Amok, Killer Croc, a million slip cover on this one, Wicked Design, but then, lo and behold, if you turn it around, Killer Croc 2. So I didn't know when I bought it, I was getting two movies for the price of one, so that's always a bonus. Okay, so this one is region locked away, so you have to be careful if you're buying this because you'll only be able to watch it on a multi-region play. Uh, lots of features, but considering there's two films, maybe not loads and loads, two discs here for your two films. I can't really comment on this because I haven't watched it. I started watching it before, but I fell asleep, which is not a slide on the film. But sometimes you just can't help, can you? You could be watching the best film in the world and still fall asleep. So we're about to get into this one anyway. So Killer Crocodile 1 and 2. Awesome. Then aside from the two I bigged up earlier, Siege and... Um, what was the other one I said you need to watch? Midnight. And the peanut butter solution this is the other one i'm going to recommend now this is the beast of a movie this is called retribution all right this is awesome the slip covers wicked you've got the back there wicked and then this is a big big set this is this has got the three discs in i think remember that um artwork from the video shop days what i do anyway not that i ever saw the film mind multi-region so you've got no excuse not to check this out Shit loads of features let me tell you this is film is awesome and the guy who's in it he's quite friendly with uh Severin, they had signed ones you could buy as well, but I didn't bother. Again, I'm moaning about the 10 millimeter Amory cases with three discs in because this one has broken inside where it's just all crammed in. So there's your first disc, that's your second disc, and then that's the soundtrack. So that's wicked. You also get, is it a booklet? Yeah, it's a, you don't, Severin don't do a lot of booklets, I gotta be fair. So um, it's funny with Severin, like with Vinegar Syndrome or whatever, and like Screen Factory, you can kind of guess what you're gonna get but with Severin. The releases just vary from one disc, no slipcover, slipcover four discs, soundtracks. You just don't know what one release to the next is going to bring. This is fine. And then you've got a booklet then. It's really interesting to read because this book is, this book, this film is absolutely awesome. So again, has it got reversible art? I'm not sure, probably has. Yeah, it's got reversible art. This one's funky. This other one. I might flip it actually. No, I don't know. I like the old school one. So this one comes highly recommended along with those couple of others. I would put this one top of the list. To be honest, this movie is absolutely fantastic. If you like that 80s cheese. I think you can still get um, the sign ones on Severin as well, but it's like an extra 10 pound or whatever, 15 pound. I didn't know the guy at the time. I didn't know the film when I bought it, but in hindsight, because I love the film so much, I would have bought the signed version if I had known I was going to love it as much as I did. So that's Retribution. Make sure you check that out. Here's another underrated one here. Okay, I've seen this at a film festival in like 2011. I didn't really like it. I think it was because it was a late night movie and I was tired. But this is The Theatre Bazaar. So this stars Udo Kia. And this is an anthology movie. And I tell you what, some of the talent involved in this. How I didn't like it the first time, I never know. Check this out now. Like, these are the ones who do the shorts. So you've got Douglas Buck who done Family Portraits. You've got Buddy Giovanasso, who done Combat Shop. David Gregory, who done played Terry and owns Sabrin. Karim Hussein, um, Jeremy Caston, and Tom Savini, 
and Richard Stanley. So as soon as I seen Richard Stanley done one, because Richard Stanley don't do a, a lot of stuff anymore, right? he's done Colour Out of Space, but before that, don't think he had directed anything for a long time after that nightmare with Dr. Moreau's Island, whatever it's fucking called. All right, but this is awesome, I'm telling you, it's like, like six or seven shorts on here. Like Udo Kier's in the Theatre Bazaar is based on the Grand Guggenau from Paris, France, you know, in the early 1900s. And, you know, you've got all these little animations. What's the sliding effect? All these little animations here to show you what's going on in the different shorts. This one, directed by Richard Stanley, about the frog woman. Oh, my God, it is absolutely awesome. Probably the best short I've ever seen in an anthology movie. And I've seen some anthology movies, mate. So, yeah, they're all, they're all, when I say they're all awesome, I can't remember all of them, to be honest. I watched it not so long ago as well, but you know what it's like. Yeah, wet dreams, that's a messed up one as well. I don't know if you can see, like, the thing between the woman's legs. <laughs> Get yourself an idea of it. So, you need to see this, honestly. This is a movie you probably wouldn't come across. You won't find it in CEX or anything, I doubt. So, Theatre Bazaar, wicked. To this set. And the one is the, um, I think the one might be a soundtrack, is it? Yeah, so the one is a soundtrack. There's your track listings, and there's like your flyer. If it was a if it was a real show in the Grand Guggenel back in the day, that's the sort of thing they have. If you don't know what the Grand Guggenel is, I don't know if my pronunciation is right, but it's just an old theatre in Paris in like nineteen seventeen or whatever. They used to just do more like risque um, shows, like violent shows, horror shows, rather than your usual operas and things like that. Um, it wasn't for everybody. I think it had some problems and it shut down after a while. But yeah, that's where you'd go to catch your horror fix back in the early 1900s. So the Theatre Bazaar, wicked, check it out. All right, then we got a couple of uh, 4Ks we're moving on to now, okay? So um, first one we got then, Action Mutante by um, Alex Della Inglacia. So he's done three films, a seven of all released on 4K. He might have done more, but don't get me wrong, but they released three of his films. This is the earliest one. This is from 1992, okay? So you've got your slipcover there, wicked design on the back. And then you've got loads of special features on this one. And it's multi-region. Oh, I didn't check the region on Theatre Bazaar, did I? Multi, so you're okay. You can watch this in the UK without fret. Um, so this has got your double Dolby, your Dolby Vision, and your Dolby Atmos. Can't fault that. Um, I haven't seen it, so I don't know what it's about. It's some sort of horror sci-fi. I mean, it looks wicked. Like when you look at the design on this woman in the background with all the bloody face, her face, all her lips tied together, whatever. So I do think I like this film, but um, just haven't got around to watching it yet. There's no reversible art on this one, but um, so two disc, 4K, slightly expensive, a seven and a half of their 4Ks, but you know, it's nice thick slip cover and everything. So that is Action Mutante. And then another one by the same director is. One of his American films, I don't know if it's his like breakthrough American film or what, from 1997, Padita Durango. So it stars Javier Bardem and Rosie Perez. i got to say, I didn't really enjoy this movie. Maybe I need to watch it again. I just couldn't get into it at all. It was so strange, but maybe not in a good way. But what I found amazing about it is Rosie Perez, she doesn't speak with that signature chipmunk voice like she does in all her other films, which tells me that that was just a gimmick. Maybe she done it first in White Man Can't Jump and then movie producers were like, oh, you've got to keep using that cutesy little voice now. Um, it's better for your profile. Um, but no, she don't speak like it in this, which is a little bit, um, push you off a bit, but in a good way, because she sounds like a much better actress, I've got to be fair. This is a wicked design. I used to have a pin badge of this till I lost it in the park, walking my dog. And then you've got your inside here. So again, it's multi-region, even though it's 4K, but then you'll have a Blu-ray that'll work. Uh, loads of features all on the second disc. Uh, I don't know about any Dolby's. I can't see the Dolby signs on there anyway, so I very much doubt it's got Dolby Atmos or Dolby Vision, but I often find Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision are just something or nothing anyway. People talk about it like this, you know, like the disc is defunct if it hadn't got it on there, but then no one would really notice if you if they just walked in and you're watching a film, if you said it had Dolby Vision or Dolby Atmos or not. Again, it's just such a... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's only noticeable to the keen eye and the keen ear. So I don't know why people fret about it so much. I've got to be fair. And then the other one by the same director. This one's from, well, I'm not sure because I haven't opened it yet, but I think it's a bit earlier than Pedita Durango, maybe about 1994, Day of the Beast. So this is the one that's supposed to be really good. This is definitely their highest rated movie and maybe Witching and Bitching as well. That's good. That's on Shudder, I think. It's a comedy. I hope um, Severin do that, which in a bit, you know, maybe they already have. I just ignored it because I've seen it a few times. But um, anyway, so you've got your slip cover and then the inside's the same as the slip, but red. Multi-region, so you're okay. 
loads of features. It's made in 1995, yeah, so two years before Petita Durango. Um, I don't really know what it's about. It's like a, um, it's a devil movie, I think, like, but um, it's a comedy horror, but it's, I think it's a band and they hook up with a priest, like a metal death metal band, and they hook up with um, a priest to go after the devil or something. I don't know, I'd have to watch it. I, I would just be spitballing most of that. And um, this again has got one of these stupid labels on the top that don't peel off very well. And you've got your double discs and you've got reversible art as well. Oh, that's a cool one. Not that I can really make out what's going on. I went to a flip that actually because the other one is similar to the slip. Oh, I don't. So yeah, like I said, I can't give you too much of the skinny on that one because I, I haven't seen it. So I would just be uh, making it up. But I have heard really good things about it. You know, I I wouldn't. I I do blind buy, um, especially in sales. But I have to know a little bit about it. Like, and I knew the word of mouth on it was good. Oh, right then. So that's Day of the Beast. Then this is an absolutely awesome film. I don't know why this one has remained unknown for so long. But this is Spider Labyrinth. Okay, so recently I bought loads of several new titles, and there were some big ones in there. Um, that I thought were going to be amazing and I just bought this one just because well I was getting an order in and um, it was part of like the new releases and it turned out that this was better than all the other ones I don't care what anyone says um, I'll show you the other ones now but this was better so we've got that there so this is a, it's a bit like uh, Polanski, Polanski meets Lynch a bit like the Ninth Gate if you've ever seen that it's about a guy and he goes to Israel looking for um, well, not Israel Budapest Looking for um, a work colleague who's gone missing, and he just ends up going down a rabbit hole like into a, a mystery, and it's really, really good. There's not a lot of violence in it, um, not a lot of um, action, but it sucks you in with the storyline. And the last 20 minutes are bonkers. Um, I can't see anything for um, region, which is very unusual, but it's a 4K anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. But no, I don't see anything about um, the regions on the back there. There's the um, Extras, loads of extras. All right, so you've got a, a three disc set. Again, it includes the soundtrack. Now you've got your card here with the soundtrack listed. So that's wicked, a little picture on the front. And so, yeah, like I said, this is a good mystery film, bit of a slow burner, but I'm into that when it's gripping and it keeps you hooked on and there's some batshit stuff to see at the end. So I highly recommend this one. If you've never heard of it, you think, oh God, I don't know whether I want to spend 30 on that. Definitely, definitely worth it. All right, then we got the video nasty that is Nightmares in a Damaged Brain, or just Nightmare. All right, so lovely slip, all embossed. Um, wicked on the back as well. So um, it's directed by Romano Scavolini. I was going to say it was directed by bloody um, Chris Twanglow then for a bit, because it looks like the cover of GBH, but obviously it's not. Um, yeah, so this is Wicked. I haven't watched it yet because I'm doing the... Uh, video nasty journey with my man Trev and we're only on the H's so Nightmare hasn't come around yet so I don't really want to watch it now and then kind of forget or if I don't like it I have to watch it again so this one's on the back burner for now but I can't wait to watch it you've got all the special features they're absolutely tons okay this was a big release for Severin they've done a UK one as well it just hasn't got all the discs in because some of it's copyrighted on the extras but as far as the film goes you get all the same so you get one two so you've got three discs you, on this, this is the one you've done, guys. It's got four rare films by David Hamilton Grant Productions. The very British obscenity of David Hamilton Grant. So it was a documentary about this guy, David Hamilton Grant. Well, obviously, he didn't direct it. He must have just produced it. Um, and then you've got four rare shorts as well. So, yeah, that's Wicked. It's got reversible art. Uh, that's the old school one. Rock God 2004. You'd have that straight on there. But I'm going to keep the newly commissioned because I just prefer it. I'm not really a purist when it comes to video nasty because I've only really delved into them now. Obviously, I've always loved horror, um, but in the 80s when I was growing up, I was just all for the slashers. So, um, yeah, I didn't, and you couldn't even get the video nasties either. And I wasn't old enough to go on a mission to find them anyway. You know, I'm only like 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, you know, you can go looking for them. So, then another one then. This is directed by Jess Franco. This is Ageless. So, this is another 4K amazing slipcover. Uh, Bridget Lahal is it on the back? I have to check the crap. The stars, yeah. Bridget Lahay and um, Tally Sabalas is in it as well. So she's in loads of films, mostly James Franco ones. You get a couple of them on Indicator now, 4Ks, which I'm going to get. I'm good that I missed this Indicator sale this time. Man. I'm in between paydays. I'm going to weekend away from being paid next Friday, so it was a no go. Um, 
But if I if it was next week, I would have smashed it because they dropped the price of their four Ks. I would have spent about two hundred quid and got them all. Um, but yeah, so this is faceless. Here's all your extras there. And then you've got your two discs. And then there's no reversible the art, but that artwork is insane, I reckon. Anyway, so I still haven't got around to watching this, but I really do. It's just one of those movies where, well, there's no excuses really. It's just like. I keep prioritising other things, but I'm definitely going to get that one done. All right, and I've showed most of these off in a separate video, so I won't spend too much time on them. But this is the Sacked. Okay, so this is the first of the um, Michel Suave um, trilogy that Severin have released. The work that's gone into these is amazing, even if the films are not your favourites. Uh, they're just amazing to hold. Like, I don't say stupid, but all mine, <laughs> my precious. But they just feel just amazing. I don't know what it is. So this is Region A Locked. I mean, the 4K would probably be all right, but the extras probably won't. I was Spider Labyrinth. I didn't say, did I? And then we've got the old school artwork here. This is from the 80s or the very early 90s? Uh, I'm not sure. Ah, 1991. There we are. So this is when, like, the sort of Italian horror phase had passed. Michel Suave, he was trying to bring it back, especially being um, Dario Argento's right-hand man. And he didn't fail in bringing it back. These movies are good. But, um, you know, it was just, it was all about the time money with the Italian slashers in the 70s and the 80s. You just can't go back in time. And by the 90s, people have just moved on to other types of film. But these were still, still did quite well, I think. So wicked um, discs here. I don't know if they were, yeah, the one's the same track. Um, I was going to say no track listing, but it's got the book here. So maybe there's a track listing at the back. Yes, there is. All right, so we get the booklet to read. The movie was okay. Um, I thought it was probably on for 20 minutes too long. Um, it's been a while since I've seen it now, although I did watch this 4K, it looked lovely. Um, it's just one of those movies, you know, I only seen it two months ago. It's kind of been and gone in my head, but that's all right, because it just means I can watch it again. Oh, there's a wicked scene I remember now, with some guys here face slice stuff, which is really wicked, so that's something to watch it for. And then the next one in the same trilogy, really, even though the films are not linked, it's just the director, is The Church. So again, feels amazing, just like the other one. Wicked artwork on the back. Just to say you can get these movies on Shameless in the UK. Shameless cover, I think, is this one. Um, you've got to be careful with Shameless. I'm nothing against them, but their movies are not always uncut. Um, this is all the features here. Absolutely loaded with features. It's region locked again now. So if you're in the UK and you haven't got multi-region, you're probably only going to be able to watch the movie on the 4K because all the extras will be on the other disc. So three discs go again. So we've got that one. That one and that one. Another soundtrack, and then you've got another booklet. That I assume we'll have the same track listing in the back. Yeah. So that's we guess so I watched this one as well. Again, I say the same about this one. As I said, for the sect, it's probably on for just a little bit too long, but it was all right. I mean, there's a wicked practical effect scene in it where all these dead bodies uh, piled up to make a cross. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, again, it kind of just went in into my mind and ate. So I could probably do giving it another watch, but I remember it being all right. And it's like, well, again, it was only like two months ago I watched it. My memory's like a sieve. All right, then we got um, Blood for Dracula. So this is a wicked one. Now, it was a bit weird that Savin released this and Vinegar Syndrome released Flash for Frankenstein, but whatever, because they both give us wicked editions. All right, so there's the back there. This one's a, a slider. And inside then you've got this lovely media book type thing. Oh, let me drop the eight there again. And then it opens up like this, so there we are. Uh, there's the features, I thought they might be a track listing for a CD, but they're all the features. And then you've got your three discs. Oh, I haven't watched this one yet. Um, I heard terrible things about these movies um, by Paul Morrissey, but uh, there's a track list in there for the CD, I think. Yeah, there's the front. Sorry, but what I was saying is, I hear terrible things about these movies, but I watched Flash for Frankenstein, and I'm not being funny. It's the best video nasty I've seen. Well, one of them, anyway. So, um, I, you know, I'm just going to watch it for myself. Like, like I say, Flash for Frankenstein, it was like a hammer film, but just for, like, these extreme elements, I just really, really like this. So maybe this will be the same. So, Blood for Dracula, I'll be watching that one soon. All right. Then we got uh, Lucio Fulci's The Psychic. Okay. So this is a wicked box set again. Uh, I think you might be able to get it on Shameless um, over here um, on Blu-ray though rather than 4K but you know nothing wrong with a Blu-ray as we were saying earlier so this is region locked again the 4K will probably be alright but to get all these lovely features you'll have to have multi-region alright so this one crams in one two this one crams in four discs into a 
Oh, actually, there's a big round race one. Let them off on this one. It's a 14 millimeter one. So, yep, there's all your discs. Oh. Wicked. Same track at the end, I guess. Yep. Uh, it's probably got a reversible art. Yeah, so that's the one artwork. And then that's your other one with a different title on. Uh, notes in black or whatever. Um, Satire Notes in Nero. I think, yeah, I think it stands for Music Notes in Black or something like that. Or to kill all the black music notes, something like that, anyway. Oh, so I gotta be honest with you, I didn't enjoy this movie that much. I didn't think it was one of Fulci's best, I find it boring, but I'm certainly gonna watch it again because it does have good reviews and maybe I was just in the wrong mood or whatever. So you've got a wicked booklet as well. So this is a really um complete release, I gotta be honest with the booklet going over there. And you've got the, the side loader of you, it's always great. I love the side loaders, me. So yeah, Lucio Fulci is the psychic. And then we've got the last one then in that Michelle Suave trilogy. Some people may say this is the best one. Delamore de Delamore, or AKA the Cemetery Man. So if you see the Grim Reap up there, absolutely awesome. This woman, she's fit her boobs. Just the best boobs you've ever seen, fair play. And then you've got the back there. Uh, this guy here is like, um, <laughs> what's the guy who helps like Frankenstein? Ego, he's like an ego type character like. And he just does all this guy's dirty work, like he's mentally messed up in the end, whatever. But he's cool, he's a wicked character, fair news. Um, so, so yeah, so there's a side loader, absolutely wicked. And you've got amazing artwork inside. This is this is the shit, this is. I love the green, it's just amazing. Um, then you've got all your features there. Again, it's region locked, unfortunately. But again, I think you can buy it on Shameless, on Blue. So you've got all the features here, absolutely loaded. Okay, so Rupert Everett is in it, who's a British actor. Uh, he's got a bit of a distinctive voice. Some people find it annoying, I think it's okay. And then again, this is a four disker. So got whatever you get there, the 4K, I guess. Make sure these don't fall out, the 4K, the Blu-ray, the features, and the soundtrack. Okay, it doesn't have a reversible art, unfortunately, on that one, but it's got the booklet. Very nice. Okay, this movie isn't for everybody. It's hard to put it into a subgenre. I'd probably call it... Um, God, a, a supernatural, romantic horror comedy, I suppose. It's very difficult to pitch in all this movie. Um, I liked elements of it and I didn't like elements of it. I would certainly watch it again. And there's the one the one side arc story about the Igor guy and the, the woman he loves, the president's daughter, who he digs up and she comes back alive and he's got her head in a TV because his TV's broke. So he puts her head in there and her head just talks and keeps him entertained. I know, it's just hilarious, like what happens to it. What happens to her towards the end? Um, the laws are a bit loose, like at the start, like they lay out these rules about these people coming back after a certain time, whatever. But then, like the rules go out to the window halfway through the film, so I'm not sure what happened there. But again, who cares? And like I said, the woman in there, I think her name's Bianca something. Not that I googled her or anything. Um, but yeah, just an amazing body fit too. So it's worth watching just for that. Again, nothing else out of it. Cemetery Man. All right, then the very last one. Well, I didn't keep this one the last for any particular reason, but it is definitely. One of the best, maybe the best film they've ever released is John Orosky's Santa Sangui. So it took me a long time to watch this because even though I bought it in a sale because it had such good reviews, I couldn't get the motivation to watch it because I thought it was going to be really arty. But it wasn't really arty at all. It was amazing. It was about like this guy and he works at like, I don't know what you want to call it, like a circus or whatever, like a, not really a freak show, but like he's just like with all these um, carnies like. And um, anyway, something happens and then it shoots to years later. And he's searching for his long lost love that he left behind at the carnival like and he's like constantly lived the life under his overbearing mother um and there's some scenes of violence on you like when the woman gets both her arms chopped off when she's on the spinning board like oh it's just absolutely amazing so yeah so this was my introduction to john Arash, john Arashky. i'm probably butchering his name but yeah so i want to check out more of his films hundreds of bloody special features absolutely loaded and it's a side loader woman's wicked with all the tattoos she's the mother um is she the mother it's been a while since i've seen her yeah i'm sure she is um absolutely awesome and you've got that there as it opens up and you open him up got your four discs this is they should they should do a four disc set so you know in the amaries the, the fit all the trays should be like this absolutely awesome and then there's the back there so like i said it's a bit of a like a it's a bit of a um coming of age romantic movie but a uh, romance movie long lost love type movie but with the added gore and just madness that John Orosky brings and then you've got these art cars then really thick really cool 
So yeah, like anyone who's like a bit on the fence about this director and is like, oh, I don't know if the movies are a bit weird for me or whatever, I would definitely check this out because it ain't as weird as you think. But it's weird in a good way, not in a confusing way or a way that makes you think, oh, what the fuck is this all about? So yeah, absolutely awesome. Um, it's been hailed as extraordinary by The Guardian. So for The Guardian to say that, it must be pretty decent tonight. Did it have any regions on you anyway? I really can't see any um, region codes again. So I really don't know if this is region locked or whether it's okay. I mean, it's 4K, the one disc, so that'll be fine. But you'll have to do your own work on this one first because I don't know if it's region locked or not. But absolutely amazing release, Santa Sangre. Oh, I guess that's about it for my seven collection now. I'm looking to get some more soon. I'm going to be hitting up the Vinegar Syndrome sale in May. And then I'll be saving up again then over a few months to it up, saving probably in August or September, where I will just get a load of stuff again. That's my pattern now. I'll do um, like 400 quid on Vinegar Syndrome, pay it off under pain a month. And then when that four months is up, then I'll spend 400 quid on Severin, pay it off under pain a month. Then I'll go back to Vinegar Syndrome. And that way I can keep myself up then with all the um, decent boutique stuff. And it's only costing me like under pain a month to do it. So I'm happy with that. There's the region stuff uh, Santa Sangre, so it's multi-region, so you're all good. Can't see if it's got any, like, Dolby Atmos or anything, but again, it just doesn't really mean anything to me. Santa Sangre, happy days. Oh, I right don't so no more waffling. I've been bummed, but thanks for watching. Sorry I haven't done a lot of content recently, but like I said, I'm having issues with a good filming setup, and I don't like just filming with, like, I don't know, a white wall in the background or my bloody bed in the background. You know, I like to have my films there. So anyway, I've been bummed, but thanks for watching. I'll catch you soon.